know, all the people who were being recruited into the, the, the army, of course, women were, but they were given uh, you know, access to move about. And so what we found out was that in most cases, it, 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 it was the women who were out. They were still moving about. They were still uh, uh, providing for the family, you know, sustaining the family during the crisis. So um, when these women went into exile, some of them left the country, some of them moved into other parts of the country. They now became the key breadwinners for the family because of this rule that they played during the conflict. So they now were the focal point. So you found out that whatever happened at the community level when it came to uh, rebuilding or reintegration, it always now came to where the women were now like in the front. What can we do to help build the skills of women, of the women in the community? Because then people began to realize that women play a very vital role in the communities. They knew more about the situations because they had access to several parts of the country. They knew where to go and they were moving about. So whatever done that, need, that would be needed to rebuild the communities, people began to realize that we need to rely on the women. The men were all at war, they were all in hiding, they were all fighting, but now we need to concentrate on this group of people, target them, and see how do we build the skills. And that comes to where we have uh, 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 local, uh, local organizations and some humanitarian organizations targeting women. Some of the skills, right from the, among the internally displaced persons, and even those who left the country. Some of the skills that uh, women learned, like before, like I said before, the literary, ad, adult literacy. We had a problem with, uh, prior to the war, where many girls were not given the opportunity, many women, many young women were not given the opportunity to go to school. But because of this vital role they played during the conflict and afterwards, there was a need that, well, if these women are educated to a certain level, they can help to rebuild their communities. So one of the things that came into, uh, uh, one of the projects that was initiated in almost all of the communities was the lit uh, adult literacy program, but basically focusing on women because of the role that they have played all along. So we have, uh, we have now going in almost, uh, in fact, in more than a thousand, uh, communities around the country, you have uh, adult literacy programs, you have uh, women acquiring skills in tailoring. Women are now given uh, micro-credit loans by the uh, 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 you know, local humanitarian organizations or some other organizations. They are given micro-credit loans. Uh, women are uh, encouraged to establish their own small uh, businesses when they come back home. For example, uh, under the UNHCR uh, reintegration scheme, what they do now is uh, if a woman comes back and you come with, say with a, a husband, and you come with your kids, with your children, what happens now under this new scheme launched by the UNHCR is that that woman can, depending on the skills that she has acquired while, while out of the country or while living somewhere out of her home, you can apply for a micro credit loan, or you can now um, get a certain uh, funding or benefits that will help you re I mean, establish a small business. Take for example, if you come back, if you go back to your community and you need to get into business, say you have learned how to do hairdressing, or you learn soap making, or you learn how to, how to bake, there's some small fund allotted to that woman to begin to start a business so that she will be able to sustain her family and keep it going. And many women have been successful at that, that they have gone, even gone to the extent where they have now extended the business to be able to take care of the family, send the children to school, and all that sort of thing, you know, so that that, that, that area has also been extended. And also when it comes to agricultural projects, you notice too that women have not only uh, play a very crucial role in this aspect, in fact, they are the ones who are now leading in that area, the agricultural projects. The women come back and they go to the rice field. They want to plant rice. They, they want to plant vegetables, you know, because from, they, they see that 
as a means to of generating income because if I if they produce the you know grow their vegetables and harvest them they take them to market if they make a dress or if they bake some cakes you know they take that to market and they generate funds so all of these um, efforts have been made with women as a focal point and the UNHCR works with what we call the community empowerment programs or projects and these are all projects that are aimed at uh, empowering people when they return home or when they return to their uh, communities. So in each of the uh, 1,000 uh, projects that have been identified or communities that have been identified so far by the UNHCR across the country, you have uh, uh, women leading the effort and you have um, these communities now coming back to life as a result of what has been infused back into their communities by local organizations, by international agencies. And um, there are some areas now that uh, the UNHCR and other organizations are beginning to look at also because they also uh, want to encourage people to go home. But then there are areas that they are looking at and say, how can you learn from the experience of the people in another area? How do you learn from this experience? So the UNHCR has set up what we call a satellite project or satellite stations in other places that uh, people just don't want to 